Welcome back to the Data Protection Diaries. In this video, we are going to be talking about people returning to work. So it's been announced this week that uh, a number of different companies are being allowed to go back to work. That's including estate agents and those organisations where the individuals simply cannot work from home. So that could be manufacturing, some small cafes, etc, etc. There's been a lot of talk around whether or not people that are returning back to work can be tested for COVID to see if they've to see if they've had it or to see if they have it and to see if they should actually be at work. And there's obviously concern about what that impact has on the individual rights and how far the employer can go. The ICO has released some guidance on this. We've been through that guidance and we're breaking out the key points. So in this video, we're going to look at whether you can test employees at work and what the things you should be looking out for are. As always, if you find this video useful and if you find this content interesting, please do give us a like. It's just a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button, uh, make sure that you get informed of any new videos and also add any comments down below and let us know if you have any questions. But for now, let's get on with the video. So the first question that we get asked quite a lot is quite simply, does taking somebody's temperature, so carrying out a temperature test at work, even have anything to do with the GDPR? Does it even class as processing information? The answer to that in itself is yes, because you know the individual. Obviously, these aren't people that are just walking past you on the street and you're indiscriminately waving um, you know, a child's temperature taker at them. These are individuals who are in your workplace or you are an individual in your workplace so your employer knows who you are you are an identifiable individual and the information that's being collected relates to you so yes the taking of temperatures and carrying out tests in the workplace does count as the processing of personal data under the gdpr the second thing to point out is that because you are taking a temperature you are taking health data you are taking um, healthcare information about the individual and that is classified as special category data. Now under the GDPR special category data has a higher level of protection over personal data so there are additional controls and additional conditions that have to be applied when organisations are looking to process health data. So yes data is being processed but more importantly, we are now talking about health data and that's why the guidance has come out for the ICO on what can and can't be done. The next thing to point out is that data protection law doesn't stop other laws. So there are obviously health and safety laws, making sure that uh, general working environments are appropriate for the individuals that are working there. Anybody working in the food manufacturing industry, anybody working um, in hospitality, etc., will already have plenty of experience around not coming to work when you're having um, tummy bugs or you've been sick within the last 24 hours. You have any kind of colds or fevers, so that obviously you're not causing cross contamination onto food products. Now, data protection law protects the rights of the individual, but as we're saying, there is lots of other laws around this, including health and safety, that also cover people not coming to work when they're ill. So these are not cancelling each other out and these should be taken together and considered as a joint collective rather than just looking at the one. We're just looking at data protection law for today. So can employers carry out testing on their employees or can you as an employee be tested by your employer? The short answer to this is yes. There is no reason why you can't be tested by your employer, but there has to be a good reason for your employer to want to carry out the testing. Now, this can come in a number of guises. The two main purposes or the two main conditions for this under the regulation are going to be for public sector organisations and how they're acting as a public authority, so to be able to carry out their task as a public authority, they can carry out testing or it's going to be within the legitimate interests of your business 
so that you are carrying out testing on your employees so that you can protect obviously your organization and you can protect other staff within your organization so there are two bases under which the testing can be carried out the other thing to point out is earlier as we, as we said earlier in the video you're going to be processing special category information which needs you to be following an additional condition under article 9 of the gdpr for processing special category information which can be for employment purposes but also under schedule one condition one of the data protection act 2018 which covers health and safety and employment law so there are other conditions that need to be considered if you're going to look to carry out testing on your employees. You shouldn't just be doing it indiscriminately just because you think it's a good idea. Make sure that you're giving good consideration to why you want to do the testing and what you think the benefits of carrying out those tests are going to be. If you are going to carry out testing, there's a number of things that you really need to give good consideration to. The first of those things is making sure that you have a well-documented, well-defined data protection impact assessment in place. Now, a data protection impact assessment will allow you to identify not only the risks of carrying out testing in the workplace, but also the benefits of carrying out uh, testing in the workplace. You'll be able to identify what information it is that you're going to collect how that information is going to be used, where it's going to be stored, and also start to document how you can mitigate any risks to the rights and freedoms of the individuals or your employees who you are considering testing. This is going to be probably the most important document that you're going to create if you're looking to carry out testing in your workplace, because it's where you start to justify why you think the testing is fair, how you're going to do it, and how that information is going to be processed and used. So if you are considering doing testing, that is the first thing that you need to do. And we have another video on the channel about how to carry out a data protection impact assessment. And I'll put the link for that down below. The next thing that you need to consider if you're going to look at testing your employees is how much data you are actually going to collect throughout this process now here what you need to think about is if the employee is just entering the building and for instance before somebody comes in you just want to take a temperature check we would recommend that you're using um, a device that doesn't physically touch the individual so obviously no in the mouth thermometers and just using a, a forehead scanner but what information are you actually going to collect do you need to collect whether they have specific symptoms? Do you need to collect information about how they're breathing or whether they have a cough? Or are you just looking to see if they have a high temperature and that is going to be your threshold? This needs to be documented in your impact assessment as well and make sure that you're only collecting the information that you really need to be able to make an informed decision. Now, in many cases, because the general public are not medical professionals, just taking a temperature and making a call on somebody having a high temperature is probably going to be enough. So the only thing that you'd be recording is the temperature of the individual. And I would suggest that you only need to record that if they have a high temperature. If they have a normal temperature, then nothing needs to be documented. Once you've carried out your testing, there is no reason for you not to keep a list of those individuals who have tested positive or have shown a high temperature reading. You will need this information internally for your HR teams and for your occupational health teams to either be able to help these individuals come back to work or to make sure that they're being managed in terms of receiving sick pay while they're not available to come into the office. At this stage, it's really important to make sure that you are keeping this information confidential. There is nothing wrong with allowing the organisation and allowing the workplace to know that there are people that have been infected and in terms of numbers, possibly even talking about departments. But where possible, you should avoid talking about specific individuals or naming specific individuals from specific departments. I appreciate that's not always going to be completely possible because if you've got four people working in accounts and one person hasn't come in, 
and you know they've got a high temperature, it's going to become fairly obvious, but that doesn't mean that the rest of the business needs to know the specific individual that's been affected. So don't forget about your duty of confidentiality when you're processing and managing the information that you collect. Make sure that you are being transparent with your employees. If you're going to carry out testing or you intend to carry out testing, you need to be clear with your employees what testing is going to be carried out, when it is going to be carried out, how that information will be processed and used, and how that individual can gain access not only to the information that you have collected about them, but also how they can gain access to how that information is being used to make decisions about them or their role within the organisation. We would highly recommend that you do this before individuals come to work. So if you're opening your office or you're opening your organisation and you're looking to start bringing people back into work, this information should already be provided to them before they come in on their first day. It's not really fair to expect somebody to read a sign on the way in or read a leaflet on their way into the office in these times. It's much fairer to provide that information ahead of time, make sure that they are being well informed and allow them to ask any questions if they've got any concerns before they turn up to work. So get that information out before start, people start coming into the office. So can you carry out testing in the workplace or can you as an employee be tested in the workplace? The simple answer is yes, but there are a number of things that need to be considered before that testing is carried out. It shouldn't be done indiscriminately. It should be done for a specific purpose or a specific reason. And most importantly, the amount of information and the need for that information needs to be adequately assessed before a decision is made on whether or not to do the testing. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the ICO, so the Information Commissioner's Office, has produced a lot of guidance around employment, working in um, working backing offices and for employers dealing with COVID-19 as employees come back to work. And I'll put a link for that down below. If you have any questions, please do let us know and you'll catch my email at the end of the video. For now, please make sure you stay safe whatever you are doing. If you have any questions, let us know. And again, if you find this video useful, or this content interesting, please do give us a like give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We look forward to speaking to you again in the not too distant future. Thanks very much.